Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai, Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai, Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai, call Halal La, Yahawa Bashimi Hawa Shai. That's Hebrew, interpret, bless Yahawa, bless Yahawa Shai. All praises to the Father Yahawa in the name of the Son Yahawa Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. Good evening. Tonight we want to examine what would happen in a war between the United States and Iran. You see, many neocons and President Trump himself say they are confident the U.S. would win a war with Iran. The president's exact words are, quote, it would be the end of Iran and Tehran would be obliterated. But according to a little known study conducted by the. All right, so you heard it. Uh, title of this video is Four Reasons U.S. Will Lose War with Iran, which is the title of the RT newscast. And um, biblically, you are going to go to war with Iran and you're going to lose just as is predicted. So like you. Just as is predicted, you know, even with Esau, you know, them doing their math, doing their homework. And um, this is a video you can watch. It's about 25, 27 minutes long. And um, let me get a quick scripture. This is 2nd Edges chapter 15, verse 28. It says, Behold, an horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. And this is when Esau, the so-called white man, when he goes and tries to invade Iran and the neighboring cities, basically the Ishmaelites, all right? This is prophecy. So I'm gonna read again. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. Because the way that these uh, Ishmaelites are gonna band together against these Edomites, all right, is gonna be crucial to, to you uh, Edomites, all right, in your army. All right, now verse 30, it says, as the Carmanians raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild bulls of the wood, and with great power shall they come and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. Now we know uh, the Carmanians is a uh, a city, a city which was in Persia, and today's Persia is called Iran. So this is talking about the Ishmaelites, all right. And it says, "Wrath go forth as the wild bull of the wood, and with great power shall they come and join battle with them, and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians." And we know today, you know what you could say, the modern day Assyrians today is the Americans, all right. It says, and they shall, it says, and then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. And if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together in great power to persecute them. This is why you Edomites won't win, because first off, it's biblical to bring forth the Third World War and the end of your kingdom. And number two, these Ishmaelites are going to band together to take you out. All right. So I'm going to play a little bit more of the video. And, um... I'm going to grab one more scripture. The Pentagon in 2002 referred to as the Millennium Challenge. In a war with Iran, the U.S. military would actually lose. The mission pitted the full might of the U.S. forces in the most expensive and expansive military exercise in history against the combined forces of Iran, and the result was not good for the U.S. Military exercises aside, we wondered what could happen following a military strike against Iran. The answer, say most military, diplomat, and Middle East experts, is that it could lead to an all-out conflagration in the region. So what we want to do tonight is take you through those geopolitical repercussions that would occur in four major areas. Number one, a clarion call to all Shias. You see, many Shia Muslims see Iran as their spiritual home. Therefore, the first thing that experts say would happen is a clarion call, if you will, to millions of Shia militias from places like Iraq and Syria and Afghanistan, where battle-hardened 
certain fighters would attack U.S. bases in those countries, while hundreds of others, perhaps thousands of Shia faithful, would join the fight in Iran proper. Let's go now to number two. All right, you see it, man. Even Esau knows, you know, do his uh, homework and um, his intelligence that he will lose. But because of his pride, you know, because of his um, greedy, his greed, you know, and also I may say the Lord putting the spirit on him, you know, to actually go forth and to make this war with Iran, which is going to turn into what? A new, a, a third world war, which is a nuclear war. Because the way that this place, America, which is biblically called Babylon the Great, which means great confusion, this place is going to be destroyed by the way of thermonuclear fire. All right. So, you know, even Esau letting you know that it's an unwinnable war. But biblically, this has to happen. All right. So I want to go from there and I want to grab Joel. Joel chapter 2 and 20, it says, but I will remove far off from you the northern army, which is talking about the America's army. All right. North America. It says, and I will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hand apart toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savior shall come up because he have done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord uh, will do great things. And this is a great thing that the Lord is doing because the Lord is destroying, okay, you Edomites empire, okay? Today, you call yourself Americans, but really, you're nothing but the Greek and Roman empire uh, refurbished, all right? This is nothing but modern-day Egypt, Sodom, okay? As the scripture said, this is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, you know? But um, this also is called ba uh, uh, Egypt because why? The Israelites are in bondage. But it says, but I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part, his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up. Because when you Edomites get in that land and think, you know, because also too Esau has America, they has allies in Saudi Arabia and they have plenty of uh, stations there, you know, they have regulated there, you know, just like they want to regulate around Russia and things like that. So they can have more easy access to get inside of these countries, which are their enemies. But guess what? When you go to war with Iran, it's going to be a third world war and you're going to be destroyed. All right. Because it's prophecy. OK, so it says with his face toward the East Sea and his hand apart toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up and his ill savior shall come up because he have done great things. And that's right. Esau, you have done great things which are evil. Okay. Wickedness. Sucking Israel into the fight. Syrian forces backed by Iran would be sent to capture the Golan Heights. That would immediately suck Israel into the war, which would then suck in Israel's neighbors as well. Lebanon, for example, there are more than 200,000 descendants of Palestinians. In Jordan, there could even be an uprising against the monarchy by half a million Palestinians living in Jordanian camps. Important things to consider. Number three, Iran's missile attacks. Any attack by the United States would see Iran fire missiles, not at its attacker, but at targets in the Gulf region, which are within reach and are vulnerable to those attacks. Dubai, for example, because of tourism. Imagine that. Missiles fired at Dubai Airport. Abu Dhabi, because it contains the bulk of the Emirates oil. Both could be shut down within days. And finally, number four, the Strait of Hormuz, strangled. So, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, all export their oil and gas through the Strait of Hormuz. Yes. Iran, uh, according to intelligence officials, already can and would use mines to create a, a, a choke point, if you will. And that would bring about a complete strangulation of the world's most important oil seaway, and it could set off a worldwide economic crisis, the likes of which the world has never witnessed. Exactly. The world has never.
never witnessed the downfall of Esau, Edom. Okay? You know, when you go into that land, headed in toward Iran, which is, you know, Saudi Arabia and uh, Iraq area, you know, your ill stink is going to come up. Your army is going to be deplete, is going to be deleted, <laughs> deleted, all right? And that's what's going to lead also, you know, to a draft. You know, Esau, uh, this, this Trump, Donald, D, what's his name, uh, DJ Trump, as the apostles called him, you know, he already made mention on how they, you know, the U.S. Army is in need all right, is in a need of members, of men, you know, or women, I should say, you know, and in need of soldiers, you know, so we know that there's going to be a draft, all right, but none of this is going to take place until they force that mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip, all right, however, how the Lord may do it, we know, you know, through the prophecies that the Lord is going to force and demand, okay, you know, have these Edomites to force that chip, because that is the hours of temptation, you know. But this just shows you in this video on RT, man. All right, an unwinnable wars. Esau knows with his um, intelligence, but guess what? His pride, Esau's pride, and also the spirit that the Lord has on Esau, he's going to go up into these um, into this war with Iran, China, and Russia. All right, because it will be a third world war. Thus saith the Lord. Now. You know, I just want to get another precept. Keep it rolling. Um, this is uh, Amos chapter 9, verse 8. It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. All right. So the Lord's eyes is upon the sinful kingdom, which is America. It says, For lo, I will command and I will shift the house of Israel, all right, which are the Israelites, among all nations, like as corn is shift in a sheave, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth, because the elect is going to be uh, delivered. It says, all the sinners of my people, notice the Lord was possessive, he said, my people, which are the Israelites, so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Hispanics, Native Seminole Indians, all right, if you go back to one of those uh, uh, tribes of the 12 tribes, okay, from the seed of your father, then you're an Israelite. It says, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us, which means they have pride, all right? Thinking that the Lord won't judge you because you think that nobody could judge when the Lord sent judges in the flesh, when the Lord do judge you in the flesh, okay? Um, Thinking of a scripture, uh, Salakia. Let me see here. Bear with me. Forgot where this scripture is at. I gotta look it up. I know that's in Job, Salakia. I'm just going to play the video because uh, there's a scripture, Salakia. I want you to listen to something. This is an Iraq war veteran and congresswoman, Tulsi Gabbard. This is her take on this on Fox News. 
Uh, what I think is important for the American people to know is that a war with Iran would make the war in Iraq look like a cakewalk. The, dev the devastation and the cost would be far greater than anything we've ever experienced before. Very few politicians, or members of the media for that matter, were willing to share the truth about what could happen during the invasion of Iraq. Instead, we were, we told, we were told it would be quick, that we would be welcomed as liberators, and that we would bring peace and democracy to the entire region. Our job here on this newscast is not to scare you or to cheerlead for one side or the other. It's to tell you the truth. And that's what we do as we drill down on this story even more because we believe, as we often say, it really is time to do news again. And here's the list, the one you wait for every night, the list of questions we think you'll be asking tomorrow. What happens if war breaks out between the United States and Iran? Who is orchestrating the UK's version of Russia phobia? Uber, huge brand, household name. Why can't they turn a profit? But let's begin with this. Now more than ever, we. All right, so lock you. Just had to find the scripture. And um, let me get it right now. This is uh, Jeremiah. Chapter 50 and um, verse 9. Let's see. This is Jeremiah chapter 50 and 9. It says, It says, For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence shall she be taken. Their arrows shall be as the mighty expert men. None shall return in vain. And those arrows is talking about those intercontinental ballistic missiles. All right. Which is going to shoot forth here on Babylon the Great. You know, in that in that um, north country is Russia. OK. Let me continue to read. It says, and the child dear shall be spoiled and that spoiled her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord, because. Ye were glad because ye rejoice, O ye destroyers of my heritage, because ye are grown fat as the heifer at grass and billows as bulls. Your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed, which is talking about Great Britain, because America came out of Great Britain. This is why they celebrate their 4th of July each year. It says, Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord Yahweh, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wallowed, desolate, woolly desolate. Everyone that goeth, at, goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at her plagues. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about, all ye that bend the bow. Shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she hath sinned against the Lord. Shout against her round about. She hath given her hand, her foundation are fallen. Her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her as she hath done. Do it. Do unto her. All right. Now I'm just going to jump to straight 29. It says, um, call together the arches against Babylon. All ye that bend the bow, camp against it round about. Let none thereof escape. Escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all she hath done. Do unto her, for she hath been proud against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. All right, because of uh, ultimately America is going to be destroyed by the way of thermonuclear fire, and this is how your kingdom. You Edomites is going to fall. You know, that's why with this utopia and this fantasy and desire of the future, you know, emerging with technology, uh, AI intelligence, machines, robots, that's all nonsense. All right. What we're headed into is the end of Esau and then the beginning of Jacob that followeth. All right. Because Yahweh Shai is going to return who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. 
All right, so I'm not going to play all the video. I left that playing. I was going to stop it before, but obviously I forgot where the scripture is at. It didn't just take me a little second to get it. And um, Lord willing, I hope you're edified. You know, you can actually go watch this video. The entire video is from RT. All right, and it says four reasons U.S. would lose war with Iran. So they know with their intelligence that they will lose. But because of Esau's pride, you know, and his greed, okay, that's also, um, I believe in Habakkuk, you know, not Habakkuk, uh, Hagar. Matter of fact, bear with me, you get it. Just going to read it. This is, um, this is uh, Habakkuk chapter 2 and 5. Yea, also, because of transgressions by wine, he is a proud man. That's Esau. You know, he wants that oil over there. You know, even though he has um, the, uh, what you call it, the, uh, he has the king's seat, you know, he rules the earth, but you're not going to go in and break up these Ishmaelites because the most high have established them and made that their place. All right. So it says, yea, also because he transgressive by wine, he is a proud man, neither keep it at home. All right. Why do you want to go to war with Iran? Because he wants their resources. All right. He needs to establish his his democracy. He needs to establish his uh, agenda. OK, it says neither keep of at home who enlarge of his desires as hell and is as deaf and cannot be satisfied. But gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. And that's through the way of his new policy of his new world order, one world government, one world currency. Verse six, shall not all these take up the proverb, uh, the, excuse me, the parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his, how long? And to him that latten himself with thick clay, shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee and thou shalt be for the booties unto them. Because what's written in uh, Psalms, the second chapter, you know, you're going to be taken in the vices that you have imagined. All right. Verse eight, because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Because Esau, Edom, okay, you Edomites, you're going to go back unto that low state. Because the Nobadiah, it says, you are the lowest among all the heathen. All right. And it was one time, one at one point, you was actually you know, pushed off the earth, man. You was uh, pushed into those caves, I should say. All right. Until you came back out with the Renaissance, the rebirth, and you took over Europe and you whitewashed our pictures and things of that nature, you know, and you painted this image of the Messiah and all these things. So, you know, at one point you was the lowest and you still is. All right. When the most high is due with you, you're going to fall hard, man. You're going to fall hard. It says, because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood. And for the violence of the land and of the city and of all that dwell therein, woe to him that covereth, that covereth an evil covetousness to his, to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul. All right. So the most high got you devils in a trick bag, you know, by the point you, you thinking that you're going to bring forth this this new world, one world government thing and everybody microchip. You're going to go into Iran. You're going to regulate. The Lord got you, you know, uh, uh, headed into your demise, man. All right. So I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Uh, salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.